Alex, my only surprise is that when she died, it wasn't you that killed her. <laughs> I was blamed for most things, but we have to blame, blame Frank Butcher for yes. that particular yeah. crime. I think you were relieved about that at the time, weren't you? You were thank God I'm not the one that killed Tiff. <laughs> I, I can, truly, I can remember asking to present something at the Albert Hall, and it was at the time that Tiffany had allegedly been pushed down the stairs by Grant when actually she'd tripped. And I, walked, I said, are you sure yeah. you want me to give this award? I walked on to the Albert Hall, and to a man and woman, they just went, boom! <laughs> I think that's when I, decided, that's when I sort of decided to move into documentaries, actually. Yeah. When you look back on, you know, a film that's 18 years ago, how do you both regard that? How do you oh, feel about it? For me, it? it was just some of the best times ever. There was just, like, this code between us that we had each other's back. I was sort of learning so much. I was so young, I was 18. And um, you kind of going through life, you know, Ross watched me grow up as well, you know? Oh, look at and, you, um, both, um, both look And so we young just there. always had each other's backs, always looked after each other, saw so much whilst we were there. It was such an intense time. And You spend and... more time with your fake family than yeah. you do with your real yeah. family. Yeah. And I think that's also why some of the acting sometimes is so natural and so immediate is because mm. you are really you have a, an alternative family yeah. you know and, and of course uh, you've been back since haven't you yes yeah, just since. recently that was yeah. surreal i yeah. have to say <laughs> was it barbara barbara who actually coaxed you back yeah she did uh, um arm wrestle me slightly <laughs> she loves emotionally you. which she, she can do you. and she when I, you know and the nation loves her as well yeah you know, they do She's a great lady to have as a friend and also to work with. So it wasn't that difficult. But one minute I was down going down a coal mine in Mongolia. <laughs> Three days later, I was laying in the same kind of rooms that we have, porter cabin rooms, looking up at the BB strip lighting, going, has the last 15 years all been a dream? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then a month did later, it feel I was really in... weird walking back onto the set. Yeah, I, mean, I think the difference is, is, you know, there's a lot... When you're young and you first join it, and, and I think that goes for both of us, we joined, I joined a little bit before, obviously, I'm older than, than, than Martin. It's just not that much expectation on you because you're young. I was 25, you mm -hmm. were 19, right? Yeah. So, that, that age, you're just, like, full of beans and happy to be there and you think the world's going to be your lobster, whereas when you get a bit older, which I am now, there's the fear of failure and the yeah. expectation, mm -hmm. and I think so that true. made me, in a bizarre way, I'd just been in... In, in Syria, and I've been in, in Iraq and been shot at. In a way, they were both nervous occasions mm. for me this year, but in different ways. If yeah. I'm being honest, I think Extreme World is amazing for you because uh, some of the situations you tackle are almost beyond belief. So what's, what is the most dangerous one you've been in, do you think? I think where I've come back from in the last week and a half, I've been in Libya, and it's always the one that you feel that was closest to you personally. But in terms of, for instance, being in Afghanistan, even though I went out quite a lot out with, with, well, I was with the British Army or the American um, Marines, and you knew the lines of engagement, you would go out on patrol, you would probably get shot at. Whereas in Libya, there was he no, said nowhere. Casually. <laughs> but there, there's nowhere. There was nowhere for us to go. Uh, and we're the first people to get down to the Sahara and watch the migrants coming through from the desert. And bear in mind, more die in the desert than die crossing uh, the Mediterranean. And we had no one on our side. In fact, they still fly Gaddafi's flag over the town but that we were in. How do you get that access, oh, Ross? Well, that's I mean, a when rare. I'm I mean, that, this, that I go, just... how do you get into well, these you know, places? As a journalist, access is, is, and you know, access is primary. That's mm. what it's all about. And we've got a team that's been going for 15 years, and we. Has are it got easier good over a period of time because they know that you've seen so many people and you've been trustworthy in a yeah. way that's to tell exactly the story it, as it is? It's about it's about earning people's trust, and pe the internet now makes the world a smaller place. So when they see the programmes that we present, even if they are perceived to be in a bad light by certain people, we at least give them a platform. You have to be very careful, though, that you don't yeah. suddenly become propagandists. But how do you prepare for something like that, not just mentally, but physically? I mean, you presume you've had to be taught... <laughs> to... Trotted is a bit of way, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> You look lovely. I know, I mean, look, lovely. I'm holding my cheeks quite well, Jim. You can't, you, you, can't just, you can't just <clears throat> blunder in there, can you? I mean, I presume you've been taught how to look after yourself... Yeah, we, you know. I, 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 I sort of own, own the company, I can say, I don't run it, I get other people to do the, the hard stuff. But we go on hostile environment uh, courses once a year. We have to for insurance. And also, while Where's you're on the... Where's that Croydon or something? <laughs> <laughs> Has it changed your view of the things you do? Because there might be people say, why would you put yourself in that situation when you have a young family? And, and they'd be right for asking that question, but there are people that go to work that probably do far more dangerous jobs than I do every day. I mean, I go for a period of time and I come home. I think my wife uh, understood what I did for a living when we first met. Um, the two boys are really too, too young mm. to know. They get good presents when I come home. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I always believe... bullets whizzing past your head, which happens quite often. Yeah, I sometimes I give them the casings if I'm lucky to get them through, uh, through passport control, but I don't advise anybody doing that. make it harder, though, to see children suffering? When that, you make them, that's yeah. true, and particularly where, where I've just been, I have to say. I mean, that always... People say, what's the hardest thing? It's always seeing children suffering um, and then, obviously, other adult suffering. Mm. But, yeah, I think definitely there's... Without a doubt, there's been a, a, a hard, harder price to play in my heart, particularly when I get home and I see how my children behave and I've witnessed kids starving or, or, or mm. kids... Um, mm. in, yeah, really that's seriously... To be Ill. congratulated. It's a yeah, it's on tonight. Well Dream World. Brilliant yeah. show. Yeah. Thank, you. Well Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We get some pretty fabulous guests here on Loose Women. There's plenty more where that came from. Just click here to watch more interviews with a whole range of famous faces. And click here to subscribe. It's free, so you'd be silly not to, really. <laughs>